me. So I might call her Michelle, Miss Robinson, the CEO of E2 Recording. But guess what? I'm the CEO tonight. It's Avril in the studio. I'm going to be coming up tonight. I'm going to be hanging with the man himself. And guess what? I'll be doing some knocking on Heaven's Door. You know who that is. No other than the man himself, Ed Robinson. You know what? Michelle is here trying to be a part of it. But Michelle, sing something for the people. I can't sing to save my life. That's why I'm a CEO. I make all the money. I make sure the money is in my hand. So you can hold the title tonight, but I hold in the cash. That's what CEOs do. And people like me who just talk, make no money. <laughs> Ed, tell me a little about the studio. What makes it so different? Because I have never seen a studio with so much. Wow. I wouldn't say it's different from any other recording studio. It's just like... I have a bunch of different computers that's dedicated to different things. Some, a lot of people use one computer and accomplish basically the same thing. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm one of them kind of engineer or one of them kind of studio owners that believe in components. So as opposed to using one computer to do everything, we use like maybe six computers to do the same thing that one computer can do, I'm you know. Does it make a big difference with the six computers? To, to me, it does. Um, there's a practice that a lot of people do on Pro Tool. It's called bouncing. I hate it. You know, I like bounce to disc. You know, I don't like that practice, so I really don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Whenever I, whenever I finish mix, uh, mixing on a track and I like what it sounds like, instead of bouncing it to disc, I run it back through the analog board. This is the analog right. board? Right. Okay. As, as opposed to just bouncing it to disc and then burn it to CD. You know, I run it, I run it back through the analog board, I output it back through the analog board, then, then the, bo the analog board input it into another computer, which I have another music program on. And that's where I record that for mix down. And I can do, you know, I can do what, what, what I, people normally call pre-mastering. You know, when I decide that it's time for me to come into the studio and get yeah. my music down, yeah. This board is where I'm going to be at. The, the model is a matchless. As a matter of fact, this board, I, I bought this board from, um, from, from, from Marley Mall that does Biggie Small and all them. Biggie Small actually did some stuff on this board. Wow. You know, so this is one of them legend board there. You, mm -hmm. know, you can see it look like a legend. Yeah, get a lot mm -hmm. of beat up. When I when I just buy it, you know, I bring in this engineer to to clean it up, this technical guy to clean it up. And by the time we take out all the modules, when you look down inside, it says like you can tell where everybody was in the studio at like since like 20 years ago. Wow. <laughs> we find fried rice, with <laughs> all kind of seeds, <laughs> cigarettes, but everything was in there. Everybody leave a little yeah, something of it. Exactly, you know so. This board has been through the raps and it's still ticking today, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Still have a pristine sound to it. And it's one of the things that I really cherish, one of the, one of the experiences I cherish in my life is I used to play in hotels back in Jamaica as a, as a young musician coming. I used to play drums in hotel bands. Now, if you know anything about hotel bands back in Jamaica, where we entertain tours, we have to play like top 40 records. And not just top 40 Jamaican records. We play we play top 40 American records. Right. We play top 40 Trinidad records. We used to play all the, you know, the hot, 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 and who put pepper in the Vaseline. And most people don't know them songs, you okay. know. But we used to play them songs and, you know, to entertain tourists. And we used to play the Arabella Fanti repertoire. You know, we play the Michael Jackson repertoire. We play the Lionel Richie repertoire. We play, you know, the Prince repertoire. So, from experience, you know, just by experiencing all of that, you know, we have to rehearse probably maybe four days a week with different cabaret artists. We rehearse with people like Myrna Haig, you know, Winston Williams, E.J. Brown, which is like three different, different type of artists. You know, Myrna Haig was like total jazz, you know, everything about her stuff was jazzy. You That's know, what makes you so unique. It's, it's, I wouldn't even say unique, but it's like you, 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 we experience different things. You know, E.T. Webster, his repertoire was something different too. You know, so we really experience in every genre of music. Okay. You know, and then 
after doing all that now we come out into into the world of like recording we start recording we start doing recordings with most of the major gospel artists them in jamaica you know so we it it comes from you know the jazz rhythm and blues reggae right into gospel so we well, basically enough do all of that just for quote unquote live you know that was our nine to five okay you know so but from there now we can decide that look man I can't really be bothered with the jazzy thing. I can't be bothered with the, with, with, with the R&B thing. Or whatever, I can't be bothered with just focus now on, you know, with reggae thing or, you know, the soca thing. But we incorporate all of that, all of them stuff in it. Okay, so yeah. how long have you been in the business? E2? I, I, E2, E2 is basically about maybe 10 years, okay. you know, as, as a company. You know, it was formed between um, mm. Michelle and myself. Mm. You know, and um, not E2 really, the, 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 just the company was formed between Michelle and myself. Now, by the time my kids them was, you know, maybe a couple months old, we decided to call the company E2, which was like Ellie and EJ. Okay. You know, so we've been around for a minute, but for me as a, as a, as a recordist, as a musician, you know, I've been in this business, wow, more like 30 years. 30 years. Yeah, about 30 years now. So you've been in the business been in longer the business. than your, your, your age. <laughs> <laughs> because looking at you when you said you've been in the business for 30 years, yeah. then you had to be over 16 to be in the business. Ah. And you don't look that. So you're I don't think I reached 16 yet. Okay. So you've been <laughs> still, in the business before still, you know your age. Still under age. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I've been do, I've been doing this for a while. I've been you know just like just playing drums, you know, playing music for basically anybody, everybody who's anybody in the business, you know, and that's basically where we get our experiences from, in terms of you know what we do today. So we take all of that experience that we was doing back in Jamaica, you know, playing for different different groups, different different individual solo acts. Mm -hmm. And just from that experience, you now we draw. We just, this, I just, I personally decide I don't wanna, I don't wanna be running around the world anymore playing drums for different different people. I just wanna like just sit in and just do my thing now. You know, not 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 running around, you know, playing drums for basically everybody. You know, because I was out on the road for a minute. Even when I came to America, I went out on the road with a group called Wailing Soul. Okay. You know, and another group called the Congos. You know, I was running around with them playing drums. I played drums for A.J. Brown in Las Vegas for like three years. Okay. You know, I was at the Mirage. So you was a drummer? Yeah, I've been a drummer. I'm still a drummer. And I've seen you. I've seen you on the drums. You did, you did. I've seen you singing at the, um, the, I think it was one of the oldies show. Um, yeah, we seem to forget a lot of those cars these days. I don't know why, but... <laughs> Yes, so forget you, that a, every time I'm a holy show, I guess I'm the first person that come to mind. And, and by the time I run up on stage, because I'm supposed to be the quote-unquote youngest mm -hmm. of the oldest bunch, so I normally open the show. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm normally You're the, too the young to yeah. in the old school. So right, right. In just the opening act. <laughs> <laughs>